Hey y'all, welcome back to lesson 5B where we're gonna be talking about balanced incomplete block designs. Um, in design of experiments, there's a lot of DOEs that we can do, especially there's ones that are dealing with unbalanced designs. So let's say we're going into a study and we know that there's a situation in which we won't be able to have a balanced design. Maybe um, we don't, won't be able to have each technician be able to look at all five treatments. So it's a good practice to put some thought in before you run your study so that maybe we can have um, the idea of partial balance. And so this is very similar to the chemical example. Now, there are cases such as the cow example where you're running your experiment, a cow gets sick, you can't apply it or you can't use that cow now. And so those, those are the things we can account for. But if we go into an experiment and we know certain things, such as we won't be able to use every treatment for each maybe person or technician, I'm still using the chemical example, we can be smart about how we design it so that we can get good properties out of our experiment. So this lecture is all about balanced and complete block designs. Um, a balanced and complete block design assigns T treatments to B blocks such that each block contains K treatments that are assigned to K experimental units, where K is going to be less than T. This is what's making it incomplete. So K is now thought of the block size, which is less than the number of treatments. And if we think about the RCBD, we had our block size equal to the number of treatments because every treatment appears in every block. But in this design, that's not the case. Um, each treatment appears in exactly our blocks. So we do have replication and we see treatments the same number of times. Okay, now the harder part about this, um, about BID, and if you understand this part, I would say you have a good understanding of a balanced and complete block design. Um, so we're trying to compare treatments to each other. So we want each pair of treatments to appear the same number of times. Hopefully that makes sense. We're trying to compare treatment A and B, and so we would want them to appear the same amount of times. So in a BID, it is set up to have partial balance, so that that is each pair of treatments occurs what we're gonna call lambda amount of times, okay? Um, the properties here are our total number of observations is N is equal to R times T or B times K. Um, our frequency of treatment pairs is lambda and it follows this formula. You don't need to memorize this formula for any means. Um, our lambda though, let's say I gave you R, K, and T. And I asked you to figure out what the frequency of tree pair, tree mint pairs was. If lambda comes back as something that's not an integer, then this isn't going to be a BID. Okay. So let's go back to our chemical example, um, where we had T treatments or formulations, and we had um, B equal to five for our technicians. Our technicians are our blocks, and our formulations are our treatment. And we're curious, is this a balanced incomplete block design? And I'm gonna foreshadow and tell you it is. Um, so our block size K is four. That's because we have four treatments per one technician. Our frequency of treatment is R. That is each formulation is tested four times. So let's just look at formulation A. We can see one, two, three, Four, and it's not with the fifth technician. If we look at maybe, let's say formulation B, one, two, three, four. So frequency is the number of times we see the treatment. Now the frequency of treatment pairs is three. So each pair of formulation are tested together. And what I mean by that, is let's consider treatment pair A, C. We're gonna find every pair that the technician uses A, C. So our green highlighter, A, C, 
AC and AC. We could do this again for maybe BD. So we have BD, BD, and BD. And so you're looking at how many times that pair comes up. The ANOVA table for a balanced and complete block design, it looks exactly like what we talked about in our last lessons notes. And the reason why is because a BID is a special type of balanced or unbalanced RCDD. So again, this ANOVA table should look very familiar to what you just saw in lesson 6A. All right. Now let's go to a different example to hopefully continue to extend our understanding of a balanced incomplete block design. So in this case, we have pillow comfort. A company needs to compare comfort scores of nine types of pillows. They select 12 customers to evaluate the pillows. Customers have the patience to test at most three pillows. That's reasonable. So our treatments are our pillows where T is nine, our block is our customer, so B is 12. And the question that we wanna kind of ask ourselves is, is this a balanced incomplete block design? And again, it is. But let's try to figure out what our K, our L, and our lambda are. So our block size is three, because if we look at each block, which is the customer, each customer tests it three times. It's easy to kind of go across and count that. So K is three. Our frequency of treatment is four. So if we go up to our pillows, which is our treatment, and we kind of look down the columns, we can notice that each treatment is seen four times. So R is four. Now, the next case is to figure out what our lambda is, our frequency of treatment pairs. And in this case, again, this picture is a little bit easier to see and figure out our R's, K's, and lambdas. So what we're gonna do is let's consider treatment pair AB. So we see one pair of AB, and then we can just kind of scroll down and we see that it's no more. So you wanna check a couple more of these, but our lambda is gonna be equal to one. So if we go to maybe DE, we'll highlight this in green, and we scroll up and down, we can see that D and E are only matched or paired once. Another thing uh, that we talked about in lesson 6A was our means. So our treatment means versus our least square treatment means. This output right here um, is just comparing our means with our least square means. And then this is just plotting it to show you that there is a difference. And again, Jump will default to using the outputting the least square means and using the type three sums of squares. Our users, I will show you how to make sure you're doing that. Okay, let's talk about some other unbalanced designs. Awesome. Um, there are other ways that you can make other unbalanced designs. We can have completely randomized with varying sample size that looks like this. We can have varying block size. We can also have uneven treatment replications. For instance, here, we can also have an extended block design, so an RCBD plus a balanced incomplete block design. Pretty much, um, once we start to learn about the foundational models, RCBD, GRC, um, a generalized randomized complete block design, Latin squares, and a basic idea of unbalanced design, Hopefully you guys will start by the end of this course being like, I can combine these types. Again, this course is to give you guys a basic outline and foundation in design of experiments. There's no way I'll be able to cover every complete, I basically won't be able to cover every single design in the world because that's not possible. But 
this class will hopefully give you the foundation in which you can then extend to make more maybe complex designs such as this. My final remarks about unbalanced designs. Um, unbalanced designs are awfully implemented because of certain limitations. Um, in the pillow example, we were on the limits of customers being patient enough to test out three. One of my other favorite balanced and complete design examples is ice cream. We want to test out 10 ice creams, but people's taste buds die, not die, but wear out after eating three. So there are always limitations we want to consider. But if we can have partial balance, that is also really good for um, our design. If you can, you always want to try to have a balanced design, but again, limitations and in real experiments, that's no, not always possible. With that, we're gonna move into lesson 6C, where we're gonna go through the cow example with the missing data and the pillow comfort example using both R and jump.